Hey, comic book fans, welcome back. That's right, it's Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer. Fans, getting ready to do another episode of After the Poll. That's right, fans, this is episode three. And guys, this is the video series where I go over some of the comic books that I pulled, right? And uh, we'll be a judge of them, see what happens, right? I always tend to be the most knowledgeable person when it comes to uh, comic books. I may not be the most speculated comic book person out there. I'm just one of you guys uh, just sitting there going out there, reading my comic books and uh, giving you my thoughts on them. And uh, I love doing it. I just love sharing the experience. So I appreciate you guys taking the time watching after the poll. Uh, it's going to be a cool show. I got definitely some cool comic books um, to show you this week that I read so far, I think I read maybe five or six of them, uh, to this point. And one of those books was powers of X, which is really good or powers of 10. And we'll definitely talk about that book for sure. Um, I got five viewers on here watching right now. So thank you so much. And, uh, I really appreciate it guys. So at any time, if you want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'll shout you guys out. I'll kind of display it over here on the screen. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Another great episode of After the Poll. Do these comic books live up to the expectations? I don't know. We'll see. But yep, here we go. After the Poll 3 live. So I kind of, you know, came up with a little script here when it came with this with this show. I actually created some banners, made it look a little bit more professional. I told you I'd slowly work out the kinks when it turns out when it comes to this uh, this show. So absolutely, it's going to be a lot of fun. So yes, after the pool, episode three. So all right, so let's see. Well, what's next? Well, let's talk about the comic books now, shall we? That's why you guys are here. So um I have definitely a decent amount of comic books that we're going to talk about today. Like I said, it's probably about five or six of them. Uh, the first one we'll, we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about Contagion Issue 2. We're going to talk about uh, Year of the Villain, Joker, Issue 1. We're going to talk about Doctor Doom, Issue 1, newest release from Marvel, a new number one. Uh, the Batman's Grave, Issue 1 of 12. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 31, The Absolute Carnage tie-in. And then we're also going to be talking about The Powers of Ten, the conclusion to that series. So, yeah, I think it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. All right. So, here we go. Let's get started. And the first one that we're going to be talking about today is Contagion, issue two. Now... I liked issue one. I thought it was pretty good, actually. It had a good setup as we get to see uh, one of these actual, um, uh, these Kunlun people or whatever they are. It's called the Urchin, right? And you wind up seeing Contaminated, the Fantastic Four, right? And so that's pretty much all you know up to that point. And the thing was in desperate times trying to, you know, help everybody, right? And so in this issue... What this one does is it actually breaks down, you know, kind of like what the virus is and he searches for more help. And so this one is actually a lot more fun. I actually enjoyed this one better than uh, issue one. Let me get this off of here so I can show you guys what this book looks like. Okay. So let's go through it a little bit. Just to let you guys know, there are spoilers in this episode. So if, uh, you haven't read your copies, you know, read them first. Okay. So the artwork in this book, I thought well, this time it fit the bill when it came to this title there. I think there's a different artist on this one. It seemed a little bit more darker, more, a little bit more edgier on how it actually, um, on, uh, you know, and actually on how, uh, it should be when it comes to an actual book of, you know, apocalyptic situation. Sorry, I lost my train of thought here. So again, the characters looked really good. Uh, I liked it and uh, better than issue one. So what happens in this book? So we find out that this thing from Kung Lun is called the Urchin. Okay. And, uh, and then we wind up finding out that uh, the person that was aiding him, her name is Sparrow. So all from Kung Lun. And we found out that this particular contagion or this disease was created in Kung Lun to defend or to destroy 
um, the actual uh, actual people that lived in Kung Lun. So I thought that that was kind of sure kind of cool too. So you got to see that. And, uh, we wind up getting to see how the infection kind of starts to spread. Now the Yancey street kid winds up taking his friend to the hospital. He winds up getting touched by the neck. So you wind up seeing that he gets infected. So it looks like he's going to infect the hospital. And, uh, and in this issue, you wind up getting, um, Luke Cage and Jessica, uh, Jones involved in the whole situation and they start helping out Dr. Strange, uh, gets presented to him all the Fantastic Four and does a study on uh, all the characters as well. And so the Avengers are starting to get involved and whatnot. And we get to see our heroes. They do battle against this this creature. Uh, so, yeah, it was a very entertaining issue. The two characters that I didn't expect to make their appearance in this particular issue was actually Cloak and Dagger. And they try to contain the virus as well. So uh, that was actually a lot of fun to see those characters in there. So this is a really a good street level type of book. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I, I had a I had a great time reading it. Uh, and it makes me want to uh, read more. You know, we wind up seeing more of our heroes get infected because of this fight and, uh, and whatnot. And then at the end, you wind up getting to see this crazy ass creature. And you're just like, oh, man, that's 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 nasty. That's gross. And so, yeah, this fight kind of backfired on them. And now the superheroes are definitely paying the price. So really good second issue. Again, I like this one better than the first one. I think you guys will like this if you didn't check out the first issue. And uh, yeah, we'll see where issue three goes. So a lot of fun. Definitely that artwork um, fit a lot better this time around. We have Kyle McKay on the show says, hey. And then my good friend... Uh, uh, Lyric Magic Moments is on the show as well. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining in. I appreciate it. Again, I'm not breaking the internet here with this live show, especially on a Thursday in the middle of the day when most people are at work or at school. But hey, this is the only time I could do this type of show. So, um, so yeah, if you get to watch it after the fact, hey, that's great. I appreciate it each and every way. So thank you so much, guys. All right. So... That was Contagion there. So again, pretty good book there. Okay. The next book that we're going to be talking about is uh, Year of the Villain. It's Year of the Villain. This is the Joker issue one. Now, this book is was kind of cool. And the whole reason why I picked it up was because John Carpenter wrote it, right? He did a lot of scary shit. And so it's kind of like, wow, I'll check it out. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. Now, the Year of the Villain uh, books are actually kind of been a disappointment for me. Uh, not a great thing. But when John Carpenter wrote this, I was like, I got to give this one a try. That Lex Luthor one was a complete drag for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Jason Whitaker's on the show. It says, yeah, I'm waiting to, uh, waiting to see Amazing Spider-Man 31. You will see it, my friend. So artwork in this one is actually really good. I pointed this out on my comic book haul yesterday. Uh, the paneling layout is is really neat because you get to see the panels in all this ha 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 ha, all this Joker laughing stuff. And um, it's a very dark, another gritty type of comic book. And in this particular issue, you wind up seeing uh, this, this boy who is basically crazy. He's lost his way and... Um, and he's basically a henchman for the Joker. And uh, it, it's a very, it's an actual really sad story. And you get to see what it's like to be one of Joker's henchmen kind of going across the town and, uh, and, uh, and teaming up with him. And you get to see uh, how sick the Joker actually is. And uh, that's what made it for the interesting issue. And this henchman said, the Joker is not crazy. He's actually evil. He's actually knows what he's doing. It's just, this is his absolute intention here. And this boy, you wind up getting to see his life as he killed his father because he wanted to protect his mom. He actually has gone crazy. He's left his family. And basically at the end, throughout the issue, actually, you wind up seeing the Joker and his henchmen dress up as Batman and Robin. And they go out in the town trying to do all these crazy deeds and Joker's sick way of saving the city. And uh, by the time you wind up getting to the end of this issue, the Joker somehow in his sick way winds up 
actually reuniting the boy and his mother. And um, he winds up putting the Batman mask on this boy or this henchman. And, uh, you know, he sees Batman in his eyes. And the next thing you wind up seeing is Joker takes a freaking crowbar and he sits there and does it Jason Todd style and sits there and just beats him almost to death. Uh, by the time you get to the end of this issue, and you're just like, oh my God. So this book was definitely a very dark book. This is something that out of all the year of the villain books, this is one that I truly enjoyed and really, you know, hit the nail on the head and what the Joker is, right? He's not insane. He's just, he is evil. He truly does know what he's actually doing. So great stuff here. Um, I love this book. If you guys have the extra income to buy one this week, uh, I think this is the one to buy. It is $4.99, but worth the story. Great, gritty, dark artwork. Um, just seeing the despair on this child when he tries to escape from the Joker, it's just, it's, it's just something from a movie. So I definitely praise this one. So really, really good here, guys. All right. So let's check out a couple of the comments. Like I said, Jason Whitaker says... I'm waiting to see Amazing Spider-Man issue 31. And then he says, I am ready for Gleason to take over art duty in Amazing Spider-Man. And then SM Down joins the show and he says, what's up? And I have 13 viewers, so that's better than eight. So I really appreciate it. And uh, Gotham City Comics joins the show as well and says, uh, my pick of the week, which is actually year of the villain so this is definitely one of those books that is under the radar here so um yeah pick that one up guys so really cool stuff here all right so what's the next book we're going to talk about so we talked about contagion issue two we talked about year of the villain joker issue one and now we're going to be talking about uh dr doom this is issue one right here uh i wasn't going to pick this up originally right uh, so, but Dr. Doom is such a badass. It's like, man, I actually might have to check this out. And I like how comics are coming out more, um, with comic books that feature villains because you always see the hero and then you see the villain, you know, fight the hero, but to have a comic book with, a you know, featured the villain, I think is actually kind of cool. And you get to keep kind of see that psyche and how that villain works and whatnot. Kind of like this Joker book that I just, um, just described. So Dr. Doom issue one is written by Christopher Cantwell and Salvador La Roca does the artwork. And the artwork in this book is actually really good. The colors are, are vibrant. They're bright. Uh, and I got 17 viewers. So thanks guys. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That takes it a long way to let people know that this new live stream exists out there. Okay. Uh, so here you have Kang in the book. So the, the artwork was actually really good. You know, it's bogged down by all these 2099 ads, but nevertheless, when you do see the artwork, it is kind of cool. Okay. So I'm curious to see how many of you guys actually went out there and picked up Dr. Doom this week, uh, or was it not on your radar? Okay. So SM Down says, are you going to see the Joker? Uh, are you going to see the Joker movie? I will. I, I just don't know when. That's the tough, the tough um, decision I have to make because I'm always working. Uh, and then the next thing is, is I have kids. So they definitely can't see the Joker movie. And it's my wife doesn't really want to see it. So I might have to sneak away and do it on my own. Okay. Um, and the next one says coffee breath is on the show and he says i made it so welcome coffee breath and uh and then he says uh i got doom and loved it so yeah doom was actually a really good book like i was showing you the artwork was awesome so what happens in this book what is this one really about so we wind up seeing antillian control center and what this place actually is is that you know this book touches a lot on global warming and there is this device that was made on the moon to, I guess, get all the carbon dioxide from the earth and lower the heating of the earth. So, you know, the earth's environment will be saved and everything is great. And all this carbon dioxide gets sucked in through uh, a black hole that's created on the moon. So it's kind of wild and out there. And Dr. Dew wants to make his two cents 
um, uh, said in this issue, you know, by going live on TV and they kind of, they kind of cut him off and he's kind of pissed off because Reed and Stark, you know, didn't include him into the project, you know? So he's kind of bitter about the whole thing and he actually captures the, the news guy, which is quite interesting. So throughout this, this, uh, issue, you get to see, um, doom on Lataveria and, uh, we get to see some of his supporting cast, which is cool. And you constantly see these, uh, flashbacks with characters or with people in his life, whether it was his wife, his kids, um, how he obviously was this brilliant scientist and whatnot. And so what happens in this issue is something terribly goes wrong on this in this control center. Uh, it winds up just all, all, all of a sudden blowing up. And then what happens is they wind up launching these missiles automatically. Now, this is his land. And they think that Dr. Doom did all this, okay? And you're kind of just like, oh my God, this is this is insane. So someone is actually framing Dr. Doom. Dr. Ro Dr. Doom tries to surrender. It's actually kind of a failure. He gets Union Jack that is, you know, on his ass. So he's fighting Union Jack in there, and which was kind of cool. And he's like, guys, I'm trying to surrender, you know? And so by the time we get to the end of this issue, we wind up finding out that his whole castle is being surrounded by, you know, helicopters and whatnot. So he's going to be taken into jail, uh, which I thought was kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so it, it, it was a really great issue. I, I was shocked by this. This is really an awesome, awesome book. I definitely say go out and pick this book. This warrants is definitely a second consideration. Dr. Doom is in character here. He was trying to do the right thing, I guess, you know, but he still kind of stays in character. And uh I liked it. And I liked seeing him kind of flash back to the life he had when he was a scientist. And I thought that was, that was awesome. It's like, it's, I'm like a mask right here. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely go out and pick up Dr. Doom. I know this title is kind of deceiving. Is it doomed? No, absolutely not. This is something that I was actually on the fence about picking up when I did my most anticipated video. And, and this has exceeded my expectations. So definitely pick this one up if you haven't yet. And, uh, you know, try it out for yourself. So yeah, that's Dr. Doom. That's issue one. It's great stuff here. All right. So what do we have here for comments? We have the immortal Biggie Shack says, what's up people? So he's on the show and uh, so welcome. And then he says, too bad Doom ain't smarter than Reed. Oh, that's some fighting words right there, right? So that's kind of funny. Uh, and I love the banter. I, I just love how he captured the news guy because he hated that news guy and he actually sat there and uh, he the news guy cut him off. So it's crazy. Uh, aggressively relaxing. I love that name. Uh, and he's on the show on my comments quite often. Uh, Doom was really great. Writer seems to have a good understanding of Doom's morality. I, I definitely... Uh, agree with you 100% on that. It was a great, great read. Uh, perfect person for this, you know? And then uh, uh, the immortal Biggie Shack says aggressively. <laughs> so cool stuff. So thanks, guys, for uh, chatting in and taking the time to watching the show as well. So we have uh, 21 viewers right now. So awesome stuff. All right. So what's going to be the next book that we talk about? Well, we talked about, um, like I said, we talked about uh, Contagion. We talked about you're the villain Joker. We talked about Dr. Doom. And now we're going to be talking about the newest Batman book that came out. It always seems like there is a new Batman book each and every week. But a lot of people are not happy with Tom King's run when it comes to Batman. So uh, so you try to find an alternative, right? So if there's not Tom King Batman, there's not Detective Comics Batman. If you don't like the Black Label stuff, well, we got Batman. The Batman's Grave, issue 1 of 12. OK, uh, this one is done by Warren Ellis and H Brian Hitch uh, does the artwork in this book. And this one is another bat book this week that actually was really well done. I'm not sure if you guys check this one out. Not sure if you're willing to invest the 12 issues for it, but it is a three ninety nine book. And if you're looking for great artwork and great detective work, uh, this is the book for you guys. This is something that you're not going to want to miss. Uh, here's some of the interior artwork in case you guys haven't seen it opens up to a great two page spread, you know, Batman looking over the city, he got his cape out there, you know, blowing in the wind as well. Um, here we get to see some of these other characters I'm trying to see, we got a good page in here with, uh, with him going into the bat cave. So I want to kind of show that out to you because that's where the artwork really shines, uh, in this particular book. And I, of course I can't find it. 
Ah, that sucks. I'm sure I'll come across it eventually. But here's a cool page of someone getting to beat the fuck up right there. So that's crazy stuff right there too. So yeah. So awesome artwork when it came to this book. So what was this book about? So we have Batman here. And uh, what happens in this issue, he basically starts off, it kind of starts off a little slow. It takes a little while to get there. Uh, but you get to see him doing battle in, in Gotham City, trying to, you know, fight people in alleyways behind movie theaters, you know, very similar to what his parents went through. He's always trying to save everybody. And then what happens is um, he winds up finding out that a man has been murdered. OK. And this person uh, is infatuated with Batman. He's got about five years worth of articles of, of Batman all over his walls. And he's been there for about three days and you get to see that he's already decaying and whatnot. So Batman takes all the information. And he goes back to the Batcave. So here's that page I was looking for. So, yeah. So he goes back to the Batcave and we have a great conversation here with Alfred and Bruce and how Alfred sits there and talks to Bruce and says, do you ever think that you're kind of putting yourself into the grave? You know, you do this every night and you find yourself losing yourself a little bit each time. And so it was kind of a, it was, it was kind of a, a great conversation, but the problem is, is that Bruce, right? He never wants to hear it. He never wants to hear it. He just wants to go to work and save Gotham the way, you know, the way he is. Now, what was great about this book so much was that the detective work here was awesome. So even though it, has all this modern technology. It stays true to like that classic feel. Okay. Uh, Bruce is in his, in his bat cave and he kind of brings up a hologram image of the room and he's looking at all the clues. He's reading all the books and he's trying to just go through this person's life. Okay. And he's just trying to figure out, you know, what, what doesn't match up? Who killed you? What happened to you? Like, are you insane? Why do you follow me so much? Okay. So then all of a sudden it winds up something hits Batman in the head. He winds up busting through the doors and he finds out that, you know, there's some clues underneath a place where no one else would have searched. And that's beneath the bed under the floorboards. And the next thing you wind up seeing is when Batman exposes these floorboards. Okay. <laughs> there, there's this guy underneath his bed that's been hanging out there. I'm like, what the, f what the heck is this guy? Like, who is that? So if you guys read this issue yet, I'm curious who you think this guy might be. Is it some random dude? Is it like the Mad Hatter? Like, who is that guy? I don't know what's happening here. But I was like, wow. And so when you're done reading this, you definitely have more questions and answers by the time you were done. So it was a, it was a great, great read. Wonderful artwork. Great mystery. Great detective work. This is what Batman is, man. We don't have to go on 50 issues about Batman's love life and how he loves Catwoman and if he's going to get married or not, or if he's going to save the city from Bane, right? I mean, we could tell a great story right here. I mean, this was really, really well done. So great stuff here. I definitely suggest go out there and buy this one um, worth the $3.99. All right. So let's talk about, let's get some of the comments out here. Let's see. There's some comments here. Um, all right, so here we go. Aggressively relaxing. What's well, good, Biggie? So those guys are talking with each other. And then we have SM Down at Comic Book Corner 2.0. What did you think of that Fantastic Four with Jessica Alba? So you're talking about the first one? Well, when it comes to the Fantastic Four, I think for its time, when we had very little superhero movies, I think it was okay right? It's the same with the very first Spider-Man movies, right? Or the X-Men movies. You know, when you compare them to today's movies, they don't hold up. But Jessica Alba as, as a visible woman, I don't know if she made the best part, but she looked good, right? So, and I find it as like a guilty pleasure too. Like when I see that, um, when I see that movie on TV, I can't help but to watch it every single time it's on and i think about it and i'm like i'm like johnny storm's captain america now i, I just it's just so funny to me all right next we have um uh chi town bud or chi town bud uh i like the batman's grave that's good because i did too it's an awesome book 
Next, RD Gaming GSY. I, I don't know if that's an abbreviation. I bought it for the two page spread. <laughs> so he's talking about the uh, Batman's grave just for that two page spread. Hey, man, that artwork overall was really good. So you made a good purchase. Great story. All right. Coffee Breath says, Ellis never disappoints. I'm on board for this book too. That's awesome. Good to hear that. You guys know if it's an actual, um, if it's a monthly or, or is it bi weekly? I'm not sure. I didn't read too much into that. Um, from Heroes to Icons, hmm, the grave makes sense now, right? Uh, the Batman's grave, there's a guy under the floorboard, but at the beginning, though, Batman has his own grave. It's just there's nobody in it yet. It's right next to his parents. So kind of creepy. And Alfred takes care of that grave. All right. Next. Um, Big Lion Cat 646. The cat is in the house. Welcome, cat. And uh, Lyric Magic Moment says Batman grave was really good. And uh, Puerto, Puerto Reconnect. Love the artwork in the thumbnail. Looks just like you. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, one of my friends uh, from my group channel, guys, Comic Frontline. If you guys don't know that channel, uh, we have our own website, ComicFrontline.com, and we have our own YouTube channel, uh, Comic Frontline, and we do a weekly podcast show, uh, live stream called Comic Book Weekly. And he actually had the art commissioned done to do that for me and for the rest of our cast. So I kind of use it in my thumbnail. So that's it's cool. It's awesome that you recognize that. Tiger Tales 2, you can always count on Brian Hitch to draw some great Batman stories. All right. And SM Down, X-Men, and X-Men 2 are still in top 20 comic book movies all time. That's right. I mean, hey, man, you can't go wrong with those books. Or, I mean, with those movies, because think about it, guys. If, uh, if we did not have those X-Men movies or those first Fantastic Four movies, um, you know, kind of like – where would comic book movies go? So if those movies had to be successful and see that there was an audience for them to make all the other stuff. And, and, and people obviously say, you know, Iron Man is the movie that really kicked off the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But those first X-Men and Spider-Man movies, those are, I feel in many ways were just as important. Okay. So next, the next book we're going to talk about is um, The Amazing Spider-Man, guys. This is issue 31. Now, this is the Absolute Carnage tie-in. That's right. Uh, this cover is cool. My shop did not have the real, the variants with Mary Jane kissing Peter or Peter kissing Mary Jane or whatever it is. Uh, but nevertheless, this cover is cool by Ryan Otley. And I felt like Ryan Otley's artwork in this issue was a lot better in issue 31 than it was in 30. Uh, so this was a good, good read. Um, this time around because we get to see more of the actual um, discussion going on when it comes to Kindred and Norman Osborn. And this book should really be more of a, I guess what you want to say, more of an absolute carnage tie in. It should be more of just a Kindred story because when it comes to absolute carnage, it's not that much that goes on in it besides Peter getting his ass kicked and trying to overcome his his fear and trying to save the kids. But the rest of the issue is basically about Peter um, here kind of flashbacking to all these bad situations that uh, him and Norman had uh, in the past. And uh, we get to see that um, Norman Osborn trying to get the upper hand here on, on Peter and, and trying to get victory. But what happens in this issue is you wind up finding out that Kindred uh, – is talking to Norman about all his like disappointments and things, how, and how he's hurt people. And he actually has possession over Harry or I'm sorry, Norman Osborn by putting one of those millipedes in his ears. And now he's like always in his ear. And what happened is he lost control, didn't kill Peter. And he started going right after the kids. So what it did was it wound up giving Peter Parker some time to recover and actually try to save uh, Normie and uh, Dylan in here as well. And the scene here is something that you would see out of Invincible. If you guys ever read this, when Mark was trying to turn the tide on the battle, he would do like these types of panels. He would clinch his teeth 
And then he would just start going to town and just start kicking some serious ass. And that's what happened in this issue. The battle was awesome. And he thought about the people closest to him, the people that matter to him. And so Peter was very much in character in this issue. And it was just awesome. Look at this page. I mean, it was so good. And you're just like, man, that was, that was phenomenal. But all the clues hint in this book. I would think that the kindred is Harry and other people are thinking it too, because it kind of leads into that, how he talks about family and how, um, you know, and, and things like that. And then there, were, there was this actual flashback with Norman and Haas, Harry Osborne when Harry was like on drugs back in the day. And, um, Harry wore this, uh, purple robe and I'm going to see if I can find it. So he's wearing this purple robe here, right? And so what does Kindred wear? He wears purple too. So I wonder if that's a hint saying, okay, you're being dropped by family dialogue, me talking about family and how families let you down and you let the family down. I'm wearing purple clothes. I wore purple clothes when I was sick. You know, stupid shit like that, you know, makes me kind of think about how you know, this all ties into Harry. And somehow a lot of people are saying that it's tied into, uh, uh, what brand new day and things like that. So, um, I don't know, we'll see, but, uh, yeah. And, and at the end he's talking to, to kindred and, and that's kind of how it all wraps up. So again, it's very loosely tied to absolute carnage. Um, and it deals more with kindred. We've seen more of kindred in issue 30 and 31 than we've have seen in the first 29 issues of amazing Spider-Man and they tell it now in the absolute carnage storyline. The thing is, is even though we don't get the reveal of kindred, um, which is kind of disappointing and I feel like it's being dragged out a little bit. Uh, the thing is, is now we're going to be touching on the 2099 storyline for a couple of issues. And that's kind of frustrating because I need to know who the character is. So I'm curious, guys, like, what do you think who Kindred is? Do you think he's Harry? Do you have any ideas? Um, if you do read Amazing Spider-Man, do you read these tie-ins? Uh, again, leave it in, in the comments below. I'm very curious to see um, what you guys think. All right. Let's see a couple other comments I'll touch on real quick. So it says, Library of Comics. It says, hey, everyone, looking forward to the Dawn of X. Picked up Doom. Haven't read it yet. Uh, not sure library. If you, if you missed the beginning, I did a review on it. Uh, that was like one of the last issues I talked about. Um, definitely worth the read. Yeah. Uh, I think you're going to like it. If you're a doom fan, I think it's well done. Um, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob Hastings. Sorry if I get you guys names wrong. Carter's rules. He says big lion cat six, four, six says amazing Spider-Man run is great. I agree. I like this run. Uh, I think Nick Spencer's taking his time and telling the story, uh, but it is a good run. I've enjoyed it. I love how he's brought the supporting cast back. When Ryan Lotley is on the book, it's good. Uh, it's just when he's not on the book, it's just very, very frustrating. All right, next, Library of Comics says, Blade movies were good too. That's a good point there, Library of Comics. Blade movies were really awesome, especially like that first one, you know, before all those comic book movies came out. Blade was great. Wesley Snipes uh, played a great character, and I uh, was thoroughly entertained. And I thought that, you know, the type of um, effects that were around at the time, I, I think it still holds up, man. I think it's a great, great movie. All right. So, guys, thanks, man. I got 26 viewers right now. At one point, I had like 29. So, again, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up, please give it a thumbs up as I try to do this video each and every Thursday. Now, there will be times where certain instances come up and I can't do it every Thursday uh, or I can't do it a Thursday because of maybe work or school events or something like that, but that's when I can bring this to you. This is when I talk about some of the comic books, and I felt like doing this video um, is an easier way to talk about more comic books at one time than doing individual videos as those take a ton to edit because people always want my opinion on these comic books. So the best way to do it is to read as many as I can between Wednesday and now, and then talk about the ones that I actually read. So that's the theory of this show. Of, of this show. All right. So Library of Comics says he's a big Dr. Doom fan. All right. So now 
let's talk about the last book of the day um, that I've read so far. And this is the conclusion of Powers of Ten. That's right. So, Powers of Ten. There, this this story was a lot to take in for me. I'm not a very um, smart person in many ways. Sometimes comic book stories go over my head. Uh, but for the most part, I definitely, I understood what was happening in this book. You have to read it a couple of times. And, uh, I think the payoff here was really well done. And I think that what Hickman did for the X-Men, uh, he puts them back on the map again. I think this is the best story that's been written. And I couldn't tell you how long, you know, uh, probably a couple years ago when we had the return of when we had X-Men gold and X-Men blue, and you got to see a more traditional like X-Men people were really excited but at the end of the day that whole thing all crashed and burned and people were definitely uh disappointed with it and titles got canceled left and right and now Hickman takes over Powers of X or House of X or X-Men whatever the case may be and he flips it upside down and it's just mind-blowing okay and so in this issue you wind up getting the revelation that no matter what happens right? Okay. <laughs> the X-Men can try and try to go through all these different timelines and, and, and try to fix things. It's not going to work. They're always going to fail. The Ascension is going to happen. And the X-Men or actually Mora and Wolverine wind up finding that out from the librarian in this particular issue. And so when they find that out, that they're still going to die no matter what, what does Wolverine do like he did in a couple issues ago uh, when uh, the whole thing that happened with Apocalypse and, and whatnot? The, the first thing that he winds up doing is he winds up killing Mora again to try to start things over again. And we find out that Mora is kind of behind everything. She's the one that manipulates Professor X to do all the stuff that he's done. And basically what happens after this whole event goes on, right? We're at the point where Krakoa has just been created and uh, we get the, I guess the council has been created and uh, there's a seat that's left, you know, on, on, on the table. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's insane. But the whole thing that's against the X-Men the whole time is, uh, is, uh, is man, it's, it's basically genetics. And uh, no matter what, you know, you get to see in this issue that, uh, that the Sentinels, you know, bought them some time. The, um, uh, what's it called? The Nimrods bought them decades. But again, this was all a ploy. So all genetics can be played until we, we can create superhuman, supermen uh, to destroy all the mutants and whatnot. So no matter what's going to happen, the mutants are always going to lose. So now what happens is Mora uh, basically tries again. And uh, we're at the point now where, again, Krakoa is just established and whatnot. And you get to see, like, maybe now you see why these mutant drugs exist. Uh, you know, maybe it's to trick humans. You know, now you see why Professor Xavier acts the way he does. It's because his dream has been tainted and he's kind of been manipulated by Mora here. So there's a lot of things in play now why Professor X is the way that he is. And you kind of understand it all is in full circle. And this leads into the dawn of X and all these new books. Um, I thought overall the artwork in this book was absolutely gorgeous. It, it was just a wonderful read all the way around. Uh, you know, from first issue to last issue, House of X, Powers of Ten, you know, all great stuff, great statements made in this uh, book and whatnot. The only thing that was a little bit of a, you know, a downer was you paid six bucks for this book and you wind up getting to see a lot of repeat dialogue, but it is necessary to get the full effect of the story because you've read bits and pieces of this all the way through the other 11 issues. So this at the end of the day, when it comes to the overall event, I thought was absolutely brilliant and you will not be disappointed with this conclusion. Uh, Again, take your time in reading it because there's a lot here to be read, especially in kind of like this diary of Mora, um, you know, on how she uh, takes, I guess you want to say manipulates uh, Professor Xavier. Um, 
that was kind of crazy. Yeah, you got all this going on there. So, and that's what Hickman is known for, right? So, great stuff. Let's hope that the Dawn of X issue one is another great book. And uh, hopefully, all these other books where all the other writers kind of follow suit and make those books good as well. But um, this is something that goes down in the history books for me, you know, when it comes to the X Men. This is something that you must read. It's going to, stand the test of time. It's like a giant size X-Men issue one, you know, uh, how everything was changed here. Now there's some people that might not like this, uh, but me, I'm one of the people that actually really enjoyed it. So it was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, that's, so that's my opinion on that one. Um, from heroes to icon says definitely X-Men are back now. And, uh, coffee breath says, um, Hickman killed it. I haven't been so excited for the X-Men in a long time. Such a good setup. I hope he finishes the Black Monday murders now. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he's got a lot going on. You know, uh, a story of this magnitude takes a lot of time. And uh, I, I I can tell that he put his heart and soul when it came to this book. So, um, and he tried, you know. And that's why I did appreciate Secret Wars. Kind of the same scope, uh, but for the entire Marvel Universe when he created this whole battle world situation uh, and Dr. Doom in control. So I like his stories, you know, they're, they're pretty cool. So yeah, guys, so there you have it. There are the comics that I read so far up into this week. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, Lyric magic moments. Uh, if I have any other comments, I'll put them up there real quick. He says, good to see X-Men up there as a top book again. Yeah. I'm excited for it, but yeah, guys, I definitely thank you for watching the show and taking the time out of your day, especially in the middle of the day to watch it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, remember each and every week, uh, watch some of my other series where I have the top 10 most anticipated comic books that is released on Tuesdays. You can check out my uh, top 10 comic book covers of the week where you guys can vote on your favorite comic book cover of the week. Wednesdays are my comic book hauls. And uh, there you can put in the comments which books maybe you're thinking about maybe me wanting to talk about on after the poll. And then on Saturday, sometimes I put up some random videos. You got my comics where I show you my comic book collection, you know, from uh, uh, that I've had in my storage forever. And I pull them out like it's the first time. So there's a lot of great content to actually check out. And uh, so, yeah, guys, again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell. So you don't miss any content from me and guys, as always, you have been watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great afternoon. See you soon.